I'm going to start passing this around. And this is called Hen Bit. And this is a very good wintertime weed. And unfortunately, it's so young right now that it's hard really to talk about it. Um, but if you look at the leaves, we can talk about a structural arrangement, what we call opposite alternating. So as you look at the plant, you'll see that the leaves are set in pairs directly opposite each other. But then if you move up the stem, they will have rotated 90 degrees. So this is what we call opposite alternating. And that is a very good way of telling a structure. That one's too small to see. What was it called? Henbit? So henbit, H-E-N-B-I-T, one word, henbit. It is in the mint family. No strong mint flavor, but it does have some of the same uh, cold relieving symptoms as peppermint does, just without any sort of real flavor. Its main use though is again, just as like a salad green. How big does it get? So it will get, it'll grow in clusters. So the clusters will usually be about uh, almost two feet across. And the plants themselves will end up being under a foot tall. Oh, you hold up the book. <laughs> so, yeah, it's in my book there. It's found all across <laughs> North America. Uh, if you know mint plants, the mint flower produces a mint flower. So more puppet show. So a mint flower. The flowers of all the mint family, they have a big, it's a, a five petal uh, flower. It has a big lower lip, two little side petals that come off it. And then up above, they'll have two more petals. Sometimes those two petals are fused into one. And then they have a bunch of stamens sticking out of it. So it kind of looks like a dry gun, dry gun. <laughs> so I've been up since. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, so tubular flower, five petals, purple in color, spotted, really pretty. Um, like I said, it grows in clusters, it grows in the yards, it likes just mowed grass sort of area. Not so likely to find it out in the deep woods or anything, it's just kind of a, it likes mankind. Um, actually, let's talk quickly about that for a second. A lot of people say, you know, I, I hate humanity, I'm going to run off in the woods and live there. And What plants should I look for? What book should I bring with me? And it's like, you're, you're going about it all wrong. The deep woods are a very static environment without a lot of plants. It's always shaded, the humidity and everything. It, it, there's not a lot of change going on there, especially in Texas. So you don't get a lot of plants. Where you get a lot of plants are borders, where woods meets field, where parking lot meets baseball field, where you know, water meets woods, that sort of thing. That's where you, the plants are constantly, I'll get to you in a second. Uh, the plants are constantly fighting and, and taking over and what's good weather for plants one week is good weather for a different plant the next week. So you got a lot of plant diversity there. So if you're gonna run off and you know live away from mankind, actually find a bridge over a river, kind of on the edge of town, and that's where you're gonna have the most food. You have something here? <laughs> Ooh, okay. So, this could be any number of things. <laughs> so, this is a member of the carrot family. It could be a wild carrot. It could be poison hemlock. <laughs> it could be uh, hedge parsley. It's a lot of rocks under here. But let's see if we can pull one up. So, poison hemlock. Not poisonous, but it's texture. No, no. Okay. Yeah. okay. Socrates. Yep. <laughs> and it's not as pleasant a death as Plato would have you think. Alright. So, I'm looking at the plant. Okay, like I said, it's not poisonous to touch, so we're okay to touch it. Sometimes you just don't know yet what it is because there's not enough structural details. But I'm looking at this and let's talk about compound leaves. So one of the hardest concepts for peoples to grasp, 
seems to be the difference between a simple leaf and a compound leaf. And so let's see if I can explain it. We may fall back on puppets again. I'm just trying to get some more up here. I want people to have. It's unlikely this is wild carrot. Okay, so compound leaf versus a simple leaf. When you think about simple leaves, or when you think about leaves, most people picture just, you know, a leaf sitting on a tree, falls on and drops to the ground. So simple leaf. Ah, perfect. An example of a simple leaf. So when winter comes, it drops off from here and falls to the ground. So nature, though, is creative. It also makes things called compound leaves, where just a part like this will just be a simple leaflet, and there will be multiple things all attached. The easiest way to tell, if you have the time, if a leaf is compound or simple, is wait until fall and see where it drops. If it just drops as an individual leaflet, that's a simple leaf. If it drops with a bunch of leaflets connected to one stem, that's a compound leaf. If you have a magnifying glass in the summer, you can go and look at where the stem attaches to the branch. There will be a little seam there. So whether it's a simple leaf or a compound leaf, where the true leaf is attached to the true stem, there will be a little scar or a little seam. That's where it drops the leaf. So if you follow the leaflet and it just blends smoothly into the stem with no seam, that means it's, it's a, probably a compound leaf. You gotta follow, keep following the stem until you find that seam. So looking, oh, that's grass. On weeds, it becomes a little more tricky. Well, if we look at this, this is where years of experience comes in hand. This would be a, this would actually be a tri-compound leaf. So not only does it have leaflets, but the leaflets have leaflets. So if you're looking at your, your plant there. So you'd be going, okay, so I got a small weed. The leaves are growing in a rosette. The leaves are tri-compound. Uh, so the leaflets have leaflets. Deeply lobed, the stem is hairy. The hairiness is, a, is an indicator, it's a structural feature. It has a tap root. So it has a single root that grows down and then there might be little fine roots coming off it, but the tap root is another structural feature. I'm just gonna smell it. No real distinct smell. If I had a guess, I would say hedge parsley just from years of experience, but mainly due to the, the tri-compound leaves and growing along a fence line. Mm -hmm. um, hedge parsley, the seeds are edible, kind of like celery seeds or carrot seeds. The rest, not so much. But yeah, so when you find an unknown plant, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at the leaf structure. You're looking where it is growing, when it is growing, what the root looks like. Flowers are a great way of identifying a plant. If you have flowers, that, that really speeds it up. People ask about apps. Is there something I can just take a picture of the plant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's also apps that will allow you to take a picture of the plant and claim they will identify it. Wow. Um, I still haven't found one that I trust. The thing to remember about plants is they don't have a distinctive face. Where if you're taking a picture of a human, you know, it's pretty easy to figure out where their face is. But on plants, you know, if you take a picture from this angle versus this angle versus this angle, you know, there's, there's lots of different angles that, you know, you would be taking it from. There's no central face to, to focus on. So it's much, much harder to figure out for the artificial intelligence to, to zero in on it. So these will just drop down to the ground. Well, um, the hemlock, what, um, what would, yeah, what Okay, would so have... hemlock, um, it likes to grow along ditches. So the, uh, that's one of the really annoying things about hemlock and wild carrots. So especially over in East Texas, the ditches are filled with both hemlock and wild carrot at the same time. So a couple of differences though. The wild carrot 
doesn't like to have wet feet, so it'll be slightly up the side of the ditch, whereas the hemlock will be in the water itself. If you pull it out of, well, if you look at the stems, the wild carrot, the stems of that are going to be hairy, whereas the hemlock stems are smooth. Another name for wild carrot is Queen Anne's Lace. So just remember, Queen Anne had hairy legs. Okay, the, if you pull it out of the ground, the taproot, if you slice the taproot the long way, open it up, the wild carrot will be just like a carrot. It'll be a solid mass. It'll have the rings in it, but like you cut a white carrot in half. The hemlock will actually have hollow segments like bamboo. So that's a real good thing. Just cutting the, the root in half, if it has the hollow segments like bamboo, that's the hemlock. If you follow it up to the flowers, the wild carrot flowers, the Queen Anne's Lace, it'll be very packed together like cauliflower. So each flower is touching the other ones. They're very densely packed. The hemlock, they don't like each other. They're gonna be, each flower will be out spread away. So it's gonna have a bigger overall bulb uh, the individual flowers on in both cases are only about a quarter inch in size, white. But in the hemlock, they'll be very spread apart, whereas in the wild carrot, they'll be touching each other. But at the very least, the root is the key. But even on that, the root generally has to be about the size of my finger for those openings to really be noticeable. So. Is the photosensitive uh, reaction to the leaves and the stem just to the stem and the leaves, or is it on the root as well as the plants? Okay, yeah, so one of the incidences with that whole family of plants, really, is it can make you somewhat susceptible to ultraviolet light, make you sunburn uh, more, and in particular the sap, which is actually found throughout the plant. So, yeah. Is that but, both of them? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's less of a problem in hemlock because you're dead, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it can still be there. Now it's Queen Anne's Lace is the same as Yarrow? No, Queen Anne's Lace and Yarrow are very different plants. Yarrow just has similar feathery fe fe feathery leaves. So, yeah. Um, didn't see any Yarrow here. I've seen it in the area. We, we might get lucky. Okay. There's a lot of good stuff on this side. It's all really young though right now. Is this planting? Uh, this, yeah, that is plantain there. Okay. Next one. My knife. Ah. All right. Now we're going to talk about some medicinal plants here. This one. Okay. What I'm going to pass around now, and I'm going to find some more, so we'll start with you, is called Carolina geranium. Uh, oh, that's good. Here. 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 Here.